Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's time for show episode number 139 of the Irish Family History Podcast. And among today's topics at the head school are... Dun Sheath is the family name of the day. Hello Fada, Irish language and culture is launching. Londonderry lands and families. Irish drivers report themselves the best in the world, or at least the best in Europe. Uh, the latest Irish DNA studies in Ireland. Derry City and Murals. <clears throat> Derry City and Murals are the video of the week. And Carrying the Turf. Why don't you think about sponsoring the head school yourself? It sure would be appreciated. I think you all know that. And uh, remember to listen to all seven of our podcast series. I think they're up now, and we got one more on the way. Well, what we've got for the notes for this week at the cafe here. Well, you know it's like Murphy's Law always is. I made a note an episode or two ago about the uh, enhanced version of this podcast where you not only listen to it, but it also gives you some still photographs and some links on the screen that you can click and go right to certain places I might be talking about. And sure enough, that episode, I think, uh, didn't have those links in there because we're converting over to another system. So uh, we've got it all in order now in case you tried it. And uh, hey, you still got the audio version. So uh, more and more people are signing up for the enhanced version. And it's uh, just as easy to do. You can go to iTunes or the web page to do that. It just says enhanced on it there. And uh, remember, if you've got iTunes or QuickTime, uh, either one of those two things, that'll make it work. So uh, get that photo enhanced version if you've got a mind to. And uh, hey, my email filter also blocked out a few uh, emails sent from the web page on our contact link. So I got to a few of those. A few of them might be have been missed, but uh, uh, everything's up and running now. We've got it all oiled. Number two, hey, I had a great time recording the first session of Hello Fada, our Irish language podcast that's coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, you don't have to know the Irish language to enjoy it. It's a little bit about the history of the language and experiences in Ireland, and uh, I think you'll like it, but it, it also has a word, an Irish word of the day every day, I think we'll, we'll say. And uh, if you're curious or you just like languages and communication, you're going to enjoy it. And it's a mix of uh, words, culture, and experience. Renata is your session leader, and she teaches at the head school, and uh, she's a good one, so I'm sure you're going to jump right in. Hey, we walked right over that musical interlude. We've got time now. We're going to have the one-minute podcast. Each uh, week we're taking uh, one of our eight other podcast series that cover recitation, travel, history, Irish America, or the Irish language, and we put it on here for your enjoyment. So today we've got one, and uh, it's an extract from that Hello Fada series, and let's hear, uh, let's hear what Renata and I are talking about during that episode. Slide. Now, what I've also seen on the computer, a lot of people will sign off and they'll say slan, like just S-L-A-N. Oh, now that's a different word. S-L-A fada N. That's that little mark over the A. Oh, that's the accent mark. That's the accent mark. And oh. that keeps it from sounding like slan. Makes it slan. Okay. And slan means health. Oh, I mean like good health to you. But well, it, that's... Ex- you know, it's yeah. a root word. It means health. And so does slancha. Slancha means health. But really, 
they use slon as goodbye. And how do you spell slantia? Slantia is S-L-A-F-A-D-A. I-N-T-E. Okay. I've seen that spelled a whole lot of different ways, too. <laughs> I've, of course, you know, that's only fair because in, I've researched things going back for, well, a thousand years, really, in some of these writings. And the way they spell things in Ireland changes so much. Oh, the same see. word. Yes. The okay. very And even scholars, would they were fooled now and then, or they, they'd say, well, this is too complicated. I'm going to simplify things. And so you have several different versions of Irish, and you have to know which version you're reading. Right. And that really gets me. Do you have any uh, tips? Very hard. Well, one of the things to remember is that the language was simplified. Well, that's our sample for the day. It's a preview. It's the first time anybody's heard any of it. So uh, consider yourself uh, informed in advance. And uh, the word for that day was slantia. And we got into all kinds of other topics, too, I believe. So... Uh, that should give you an idea of what you got look, to look forward to on that podcast. And I think everybody will enjoy it. And it's the shortest duration of all of them. We just go for five, maybe eight minutes. So uh, uh, you can hear it, enjoy it, and uh, get on with the rest of your day very quickly and learn a little bit of Irish at the same time. Hey, now it's time for the book of the month. And we're going to take on Londonderry Lands and Families one more time as the book of the month. It sort of ties in with one of the names today, at least that area or neighborhood of Ireland. And uh, it's really a connection for all those who had families either in Ireland or coming in to settle in Ulster in the 17th century. And to all of those who lost lands and holdings at that time, too, uh, you can see the link on my blog to this book with some more information on it. But this is from uh, this is one of those four books from the set, uh, The Conquest of Ireland by Hill. And it includes Irish, Scots-Irish, and English settlers from 1609 and a little later. Uh, it's really a one-of-a-kind resource as far as I found uh, uh, for things out there to help family researchers. And it has uh, notations of landowners and landowner records. And uh, this is actually the third set to that, uh, the third volume to that set. And it records events really as they happened. And it talks about the infamous, infamous Londoners, plantations and the settlement of Ireland and the Irish sep seps who uh, lost their lands and the deeds and misdeeds of some of those who took the land and some of those who said they were improving the land to the king, but they really didn't do it. And it tells the story of those Londoners who came to settle in Ireland. I guess that's how it got the name Londonderry, sometimes shortened to Derry, depending on your political sentiments, that's for sure. Uh, and it talks about the lands of Lachlan Shollin, uh, which had belonged to Tyrone, and the old county of Coleraine, which belonged to O'Cahan, and a small little piece of Donegal even, which uh, included the island on which the city of Derry stood, and a small portion of County Antrim that adjoined Coleraine. And all these lands were handed over to 12 London companies for plantation and united to form the present county of Londonderry or Derry. Now, they also talk about the fall of the local chieftains there, and, of course, that includes the K-Hands or the O-K-Hands. And sometimes you'll find that name uh, pronounced just as Cain. And the O'Mullins, which is sometimes Mullins or Mullins. Uh, the McGilligans or Gilligan. Uh, the McCloskeys or Kluskies. And uh, the background, a lot of those steps are given there. So it helps and it gives some notes on persons and specific families. And translations like uh, Cahan translated as Quivalli and how John O'Reilly became the Queen's O'Reilly, something most people didn't want to become. Well, now we're moving. Yeah, hey, there's one thing you got to remember. We've got a podcast, a blog reader, and a blog. Three different ways to get this. One's uh, uh, with me broadcasting, like you hear my voice right now, and one's a uh, blog where you you can read everything I'm saying on the blog. And a blog reader is where a computer reads my blog. So we're trying to make it easy for everybody. And, uh, well, you heard the music, and that meant that 
It's time to raise our eyes skyward for the magnificent seven of the day. And here they are. William Hayden Power of Dean Hill, East Sussex. Your book of Irish families has shipped. Christopher Johnson of Brighton, Colorado. Your County Sligo book has shipped. Arlene Reed of Clark, Wyoming. Your County Roscommon, Ireland genealogy book has shipped. John Massatelli of Elmira, California. Your County Antrim uh, book, Passenger List book, and Scottish Mac book has shipped, along with the 1659 census and the birth index. Boy, that's quite an order there. You've got a library going. And number five, Karen Booth of Jensen Beach, Florida, your Irish Book of Arms, and your free choice of the Passenger List book as a uh, gold member, I think it was, uh, have shipped and welcome. Uh, hey, she's searching for the Neil and Dun Sheath or Dun Seath families of Ireland. More about them in a little bit. Number six, Dana Flynn of Easton, Pennsylvania, your cork book shipped. And number seven, Daniel O'Malley of Garnerville, New York, your County Mayo genealogy and family history book has shipped. That reminds me, thanks to all of our members, without you, these podcasts wouldn't be possible. Sponsors are welcome and needed. Well, that little number there means it's time for the Irish family name of the day. The name of the day is Dunseath or Dunsheath, uh, D-U-N-S-E-A-T-H. And of all likelihood, that's going to come from probably a county outside of Ireland. But let's take a look. And that's in honor of today's member, Karen Booth. There's a lot of variant spellings of the name. The S in there can be a S or a SH. And of course, there's confusion with that when people are studying the Irish language as well. And you can even just drop the TH off the end of that name, Dunseath or Dunsheath. It can be Dunshe. Uh, can, it can be spelled with an EI in there or a double E. We're all familiar with that if we've been studying Irish names. So we've found seven or eight of them there, and uh, there's a bunch of them in the the uh, Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. We've got a link to that on the blog. And if we take a quick look at the history of the name, we find it as a name of the north of Ireland in the province of Ulster in the 17th century. And uh, you're going to find uh, something like the name like that in the hearth money rolls at that time in Antrim and Tyrone, the 17th century. And Ballymena appears to be a center for the name, according to a lot of folks. And that 17th century marked the fall of the old Gaelic order, uh, and the flight of the earls, the plantation of Ulster, the Battle of the Boyne, the Treaty of Limerick. And uh, the plantation of Ulster really started in earnest in 1609, and that marks a likely era of settlement for the name. Now, it also appeared to be a Scots-Irish family name, according to my studies, and uh, one of the name may have settled in Ulster in that 17th century, so you might be looking at those official records. And a lot of this came from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's the master volume to our 34-volume uh, set on Irish families and Irish family history, so don't forget that. And uh, gosh, we've also, yeah, we've also got a county history book uh, on uh the counties in the north of Ireland, each county, Tyrone and Antrim, have a book to themselves, a little uh, study guide type thing. It's not jam full of thousands of family histories. Uh, those two county books are more to help anybody come into that county and do some basic research, where to go and who the families were and what were the coats of arms. And uh, well, now I think we better be coming up to the uh, Irish family coats of arms well, if we take a look in there for uh, at least Dunsheath or the way we're, way we're spelling it, it's not there, and that's common, and uh, that might make a little bit of sense. It came from outside of Ireland. There aren't too many of the name in our records that we find, and we're going to have a talk about that in just a second. There's going to be uh, uh, several records that we did find the name in, which is always nice to know. Uh, we found it well, way up there in the north of Ireland, and we found it all the way down there in the south of Ireland. So we're going to have some fun with that. And uh, I think that's coming up real quick. And what else have we got going here? We've got the podcast. We've got the book. 
Well, right now, coming up, we've got the free master online index search at irishroots.com, and it's going to tell us uh, a few of the sources that we found the name in in that free online search on our webpage. Hey, before we consult that index, I just remembered at the end of this one, we're going to be talking about uh, there's an Irish wedding with food for 100 people, and it only costs 495 pounds. And that included the food and the bridal. Uh, Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. You'll probably want to want to know where that's at if you want to go have a special uh, wedding in Ireland. And we'll be talking about that towards the end of our deal. But let's take a look at this free master index search. And we see listings for the name at least four times, which isn't a whole lot considered. Most, some have a hundred, but we found it in the master guide to the spelling of names. Uh, Dun She is in the birth index of Ireland. And as I said above, we had it in the book of Irish families, great and small. It's a very scarce name. And we also found that names of Dun Sanny are probably not related or the Huguenot name of Dancy. Well, that means we're going around the world in Irish ways, and we're going to see what the web pages or videos are out there that might help us with this. Uh, we'll just finish up with a Dunshi, and here's a page just for that name, our name of the week, and variant spellings of it. And it's uh, called uh, Dunshi, 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 Dunshi genealogy page: Scotch Irish ancestors, uh, or Scots Irish ancestors. That's on Angel Fire. A link on my blog. Number two, County Derry Genealogy Links. Uh, that's on uh, geneal- genealogylinks.net. I got a link on the blog. Number three, uh, London Derry City and Murals, Northern Ireland Video of the Week. And it has murals and paintings from all over the walls and the flags that are flying uh, uh, in Northern Ireland. And a lot of them are political too, but you'll have, you have uh, flags and murals from both sides of the. Uh, not both sides of the border, but both sides of the political spectrum, shall we say. And uh, it might give you a, a different feel for things for genealogy folks who maybe haven't studied the history uh, a whole lot there. And there are some political Im- implications, of course, but it's there for the watching. And uh, number four, the Irish are more Spanish than Celtic, according to some reports. Uh, we've got a link to that, a blog about that on the uh, on our blog and uh, it goes to another one and talks about that so you'll enjoy that and we're going to talk about that more in a few minutes when we come right up to curious news and notes from Ireland today and here we go one two three Well, our first note of the day, uh, that DNA study said that the primary genetic legacy of Ireland seems to have come from Spain and Portugal uh, right after that last ice age. And it also suggests that our blood, at least our culture, can be attributed to wider origins than perhaps we first uh, thought. It showed some DNA matches to Spain, Portugal, Scandinavia, and North Africa. Now, I didn't get far enough in that article to see what the percentage might be, and it seemed like it was a fairly small study. Uh, So it's not surprising that those are in there. It's just a matter of how much they're in there, uh, each each DNA representative. As we get more tests going, we're going to find out uh, what the percentages are. But it's nice to know we're part of the big picture. Number two, the price to purchase a house has fallen in Ireland to the levels of 2001, uh, they say in recent reports, and it's been falling uh, ever since 2006. So uh, if you're buying, that might be good news. Number three, the Clarion Hotel in Carrickfergus, County Antrim. There's a song about Carrickfergus, isn't there? It's often a wedding deal with a four-course meal for 100 people for 495 pounds, And Claire Palmer says that the red carpet, champagne, and honeymoon suite are included. 
and interest had has peaked in the idea. Boy, a four-course meal, I wonder what you might get a glass of lemonade for one course and uh, maybe a biscuit for another. Hey, but at any rate, that's a heck of a deal. If you want a wedding on a budget at a nice little place, I'd be hopping on a plane right now. There's all kinds of deals can be had. Number four, Susan Boyle, her first record album, and she's that famous singer that just packed pat, uh, popped up the last couple of months on, on television. She sold over 400,000 copies in the first week, and that's the best ever since records began, according to the Belfast Telegraph. And Susan is that fantastic singer from the Britain's Got Talent show that we all saw on television in competition not so long ago. Got a link on the blog to that story. Number five, surprise, surprise, Irish drivers have been ranked the most law-abiding in Europe as fewer say they drink and drive and fewer say they use handheld mobile phones while driving. That probably doesn't include Irish Americans, I bet. I'm not sure of their uh, driving record over there. There's been some, uh, There's been some trouble now and then. But the British, uh, the Spanish, and the Swiss followed in ranking, and just 3% of the Irish admitted to driving under the influence compared with an average of 21%, boy, in Europe, and a high of 40% in Luxembourg. I wouldn't even be walking those streets in Luxembourg then, uh, especially at night. Uh, more on the blog. At number six, some folks say Thanksgiving just isn't right for an Irish holiday. They don't have the historical background. I've got a link to that on the blog from an article in the Irish Times by Fiona McCann. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation on local history of the Irish in America and on 2,000 years of Irish history as well as on the counties and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way... A big thank you to all of our members, and away. <laughs>